operation because Florida has a, a tremendous water problem. There's no doubt about it. Um, I don't know how many bottles, bottled water that people buy in the Florida area and all that other stuff. And my mind started thinking about a friend of mine who's a big builder down there. And then I thought about the lightning and uh, how they were complaining about the water and how much water they have to use for the ice and, and people. And then I'm thinking about uh, the mayor who is a friend, Bobby Buckhorn. I talked to him and he goes, what is this thing? I said, when I come back from Vancouver, I'll explain it to everybody because I wanted to see it. I wanted to see it and actually taste the water and, and I was, I'm blown away by it to tell you the truth. Um, this for me is something that I'm hoping that will catch on big time all over the place. The other day I was watching the news and they said that the United States gave, gave seven billion dollars to Kenya to drill for water. And I thought, man, with seven billion dollars they could put enough of these machines that they can have the whole Africa with, with water. And I thought, well, how the hell do we get to these people? How do we do that? And, and that's something that May and I have been talking about along with Phil and, and Dallas and, and how to get it out there and to promote it and, and so that people have the realization. I think once you see it, once you taste the water, you know, it's great. And, and so for me, it is a no-brainer. Um, when it's funny thing, I was at a wedding in Sault Ste. Marie, I guess just a week, not even five days ago, and my brother was there, and I told him I was going to Vancouver, and he said, "What for?" I said, "I'm going out there to look at this uh, machine that gets water from air," and he looked at me. <laughs> he says, "I think you're losing it, brother." <laughs> I says, "No, Tony, I'm telling you, it actually works." He says, "How?" I said, I don't exactly know how yet, but I'm going to find out and I'm going to figure it out. And I am so impressed with it that, uh, without a doubt, I told May I want one in my house because when anybody comes over, I want them to have that and taste it. And I asked my wife today, and I called her just before I came here, I said, how much month do we spend on bottled water? She says about 75, 80 bucks a month. I said, you're kidding me. She said, no, I'm thinking, hmm, this would be like 10 or $20 a month, you know? And, and those are the type of things that people are going to have to find out, and we will f get it out there. Uh, I, I am absolutely thrilled by being in Vancouver again for something that's good. <laughs> I've had some tough times in Vancouver. <laughs> In 1972, when we lost that game, holy crap, that was the end for me there. And then in, I, in 1976, uh, 75, I guess it was, in November, I had just, <coughs> I almost signed with the Vancouver Blazers in the WHA. Jimmy Patterson made me an offer that I should have never refused, never in a million years. Mm -hmm. And we, my wife and I loved Vancouver. We thought it was beautiful. We actually saw the sun. We were in here in August. It was beautiful. Uh, in the wintertime, it was raining all the time. And when I, you, know, you come out here as a player, that's all you see. And I, I, I turned it down. I said to my wife, I really love Boston, and I want to stay in Boston. And sometimes money isn't everything. And uh, I did. Twelve games into the season, we were out here in Vancouver. It was... Three days, two days before we had to play, we went to High Steakhouse. <laughs> okay, I always went there and had a couple of bottles of wine and a couple of steaks or whatever. And um, Jimmy Patterson was there. And he came over to the table and he says, you should have signed with me. <laughs> I said, why? He says, I hear you're getting traded. I said, hell no. Dude. <laughs> 12 games, I had 12 goals and 12 assists. I figured, what the hell are you going to trade me? No chance. Well, at 7.30 in the morning, I get a call from Grapes, Don Cherry, and uh, he says, i got to talk to you. I said, what are you kidding me? I don't, it's 7.30 in the morning. We don't play for two days. Leave me the hell alone. I want to sleep. He said, no, i got to talk to you. 
And it was the first time in seven years I didn't room with Wayne Cashman. First time. And I thought, well, that Don is a new coach, so he wanted to change things around. He comes into the room. Bobby Orr is right behind him. Bobby had uh, just his pants on, no shoes, and a T-shirt. And he walked right over to the window. And he was standing there. It was at the Bayshore Hotel. And Don Cherry came in with the ugliest pajamas you ever saw in your life. <laughs> Goes with all those suits he buys. <laughs> and uh, he says, I'm sitting at the edge of bed. He says, uh, you, you've been traded. And I said, what? He says, you've been traded. I'm, I, I don't know what to tell you. I said, if you tell me New York, I'm going to jump out that window. He said, Bobby, open the window. <laughs> That's how I got told. So when I became a general manager, I promised myself that I would always call the player first before I even told the press, before I told my brother, before I told anybody. And that's what I did. And a lot of times it was a very difficult thing to tell a player that he's traded. Um, and, but then there were times, like with Rob Ramage, I call him and I says, look, I got a chance to trade you in Montreal. You got a chance to win a Stanley Cup. You want to go? Let me know because next year I don't think you can play in this team. I got to go with kids. He comes back to me. Him and his wife talked about it. And he went to Montreal and he won a Stanley Cup. So you know, sometimes you can do good as a general manager. You don't have to be a, a jerk all the time. You know? But um, I'm very excited about all of this. I'm, I'm going to be coming out to Vancouver a little bit more now. And uh, because this this water and the splash water, um, her her and I were having a little disagreement about the bottles, but that's another story. <laughs> uh, if you don't mind, people have been asking me questions. If anybody wants to ask me a question about hockey, about the water, uh, I be I know it's hotter than hell in here. <laughs> and, uh, this is insane. It's if we turn on the machine now, we get more water than we know what to do with. <laughs> if anybody wants to ask a question, I'm, I'm one of these guys, I say what I think, when I think it. And you know what, when you get older, you really don't care anymore. <laughs> everybody agree with that, right? <laughs> Absolutely. So, if there aren't any, we'll let you go and have some water or some wine, whatever you want to do. Thank you very much for coming. This is really, really great. Thank you. Yeah.